Good day, Great 12 learners. Welcome to today's economics lesson. My name is Mr. Berry. This lesson is brought to you by the Northern Cape Department of Education in collaboration with Pagama Research and Development. Great 12, today our knowledge area will be economic issues. Our topic is inflation. The subtopic is types and characteristics of inflation. At the end of the lesson, learners should be able to examine ways to measure inflation, explain different types of inflation. This information is from our exam examination guideline page 21. So the pre-knowledge, learners already understand what is inflation and measures that are taken to combine inflation. This we learned it in macroeconomics term one when we did business cycle. There was an essay there called the economic paradigm, the new economic paradigm. And we looked at ways to combine inflation when the economics is overheating. There were monetary and fiscal policies that were discussed under this uh, inflation and ways to combine inflation. So for now, that is the knowledge that the grade 12 learner has already. Right, so we are going to move to a baseline activity immediately. So we'll write a quick baseline activity before we start our lesson today. I'll give you grade 12 about five minutes to complete this. Then we'll do corrections. Right, grade 12, your five minutes is over. The first question, which economic indicator is used to determine inflation rate? This was discussed under indicators on economic pursuit. So the CPI, the consumer price index, is used to determine inflation rate. What is South Africa inflation target set by the Reserve Bank? Our inflation target is 3 to 6% when we did the price stability under macroeconomic um, macroeconomic objectives uh, we mentioned that our inflation target is three to six percent question number three why will the inflation rate of 5.4 be considered to be acceptable by the monetary policy committee 5.4 is between this target so it is within the target range of three to six percent so that's why 5.4 inflation will be accepted by the MPC why would a reduction in personal income tax increase the inflation reduction in taxation will increase inflation so a reduction in taxation it will result in an increase in disposable income so when they reduce taxes personal income tax will increase the disposable income so the money in the pocket of a worker will increase if the money in the pocket of a worker increase it will increase demand for goods and services and putting pressure on prices so a reduction in personal income tax will increase the disposable income that will in when people are having more money they will start buying more that will increase the demand for goods and services and it will put pressure on price so in a short term producers will not produce more when they see that we have too much money they will increase the price of goods and services right so today's terminology you have south african reserve bank is an institution which play a key, a, a key role in controlling inflation that is a reserve bank they are using the monetary policy to control inflation and monetary policy committee the committee that gathers on a regular basis to monitor inflation and to implement policy to control inflation inflation so a monetary policy is it consists of the governor lesita and the three deputies that is a po um, monetary policy committee it has your governor 
and the three deputies right so it's a community a committee that gathers on a regular basis to monitor inflation so they sit down and they monitor inflation and then after that our governor will come and present uh, whatever that they've came up with and then make a decision on the repo rate states SA is an institution that is responsible for calculating and publishing of um, separate inflation data for certain metropolitan areas so states SA will be calculating um and publishing separate inflation data so so far we've discussed cpi and ppi under inflation indicator on economic pursuit so the states essay will be providing us with information with different types of inflation data phillips curve so phillips curve is a graph that was done under business cycle as well that was showing us an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment so if Phillips curve is an inverse relationship uh, between unemployment and inflation it suggests that inflation and unemployment have a stable and inverse relationship in a short run an inverse relationship it means it's a negative relationship when unemployment increases inflation decreases when inflation decreases then unemployment will increase so it rep it is represented in a graph like this where there is a negative relationship when this one is going this way this one will be coming back this way an increase will lead to a decrease and then you have nominal um vs real values nominal values are expressed in a current crisis so nominal values just like a nominal gdp are expressed in a current crisis and do not account for increase in prices do not account for inflation while the real values are adjusted for inflation and represent the purchasing power so they are using the constant prices they are adjusted to inflation they remove the effect of inflation and it represents the purchasing power right grade 12 so today's lesson is a first unit of three units that we have under economic issues so under economic issues you have three units you have your inflation you have tourism and you have environment so this form part of your paper two so your paper two you have overall you have six units you have your microeconomics under microeconomics you have perfect competition you have imperfect competition and you have market failure under economic issues you have inflation you have tourism you have environment again before you start your prelim exam uh, i will i will discuss the structures of these papers so inflation is the first unit under economic issues and um, that we're going to discuss just take note that it will be part of your paper two now we are moving from paper one we are going to paper two so information on microeconomics and economic issues those remain to be your paper two macroeconomic economic pursuit that is your paper one please take note of that right so inflation uh, why central banks are so obsessed with inflation so the central bank your south africa reserve bank they are so obsessed with inflation the reserve bank is the same uh, bank that print our money let's see just signing our money there at the reserve bank so they care so much about the value of the rent right so let's use the central bank as our own central bank the reserve bank so they care so much about the value of the rent so when they produce when they make this rent they want to know how much it can buy so when you look at the basket of goods and services there you can see the same hundred rand note in 1972 you could buy full basket of goods 
1992, the basket was not uh, as full anymore. In 2012, you could buy um, only one uh, uh, um, item. And then in 2052, it's a question mark. What will happen to the value of 100 rand? So inflation will de inflation decreases the value of a currency. So that's why the central bank is so obsessed with inflation. Because with inflation, it means it's the same, 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 same money. But then the purchasing power between here and here is different. The purchasing power is different. It means the value of the same note, it has decreased over the years. So the more prices increases, the purchasing power of a note or coin decreases. So that's why the central bank will always try to find measures to keep the value of our currency. All right. Let's look at inflation being described. So inflation is a sustained and significant increase in the general price level over a period of time. So inflation as an increase, a sustained increase in the general price. So the general price of goods and services increasing. When we refer back to the basket of goods and services that side, the money did not increase or decrease. It still remained a hundred rand note. However, the general prices of the goods within the basket has increased. So there are causes. We have different causes that cause uh, the price of goods and services to increase that will be discussed in the next lessons. What is the cause of this um, increase in the general prices? For today, we just need to understand what is inflation, how is it measured, and then uh, what are the types of inflation. So today we're just going to get into details in understanding inflation. You've been talking about inflation from grade 10 and 11 and throughout the year we've been speaking of inflation and we say inflation is like, an, it's like a virus within the economy. It's not good for the economy because prices are increasing and our, our money value decreases and then it affects everyone. When prices, we are living in a world where markets, we do not negotiate prices. When you get to a market, uh, if the price of bread is 20 rand, you cannot say I have 17 rand or I have 15 rand. You must pay the same price. So markets, we do not negotiate in the markets. And then when prices are increasing, then it affects everyone because it doesn't matter of your situation you also have to pay the same price and then when i say everyone i include the marginalized group marginalized group we're speaking of those people who cannot work we're talking about old people we're talking about children disabled people they are affected as well by this inflation if prices are increasing it means they cannot afford their basic needs then it becomes a problem that's why we take it as a virus so um, the the reserve bank is more responsible in trying to keep it in trying to reduce inflation so that our money can have value right so when the price uh, the general price of goods and services increase people's real disposable income decreases if the price of goods and services increase your disposable income decreases because the value uh, the real disposable income tends to decrease your money may still be the same because now your question will be okay price are increasing so why is my money in the pocket decreasing no the money in the pocket is still the same However, the real disposable income, talking about the real values now eh, of your disposable income will decrease. So the money value that you have decreases because the prices are high. You still have the same note. However, the value of it decreases. Why? Because prices are high. It does not have the same value anymore. You cannot fill up the basket anymore with the same money. So the real disposable income decreases. There's an inverse relationship between purchasing power of money and inflation. When inflation increases, purchasing power decreases. There's an inverse relationship. It's a negative relationship. When the other one increases, the other one de um, decreases. Inflation increases, purchasing power decreases, meaning the real value of your money decreases. 
right so we're going to look at terms that you find so you have term inflation already described you have this this inflation and you have deflation these are three different terms inflation already has been described as an a sustained increase in the general price level of goods and services over a period of time so your inflation is a general increase of prices over a period of time so um, between year 1991 and 2024 the price of bread has increased drastically so that is an inflation over the years where we see the price of bread being increasing right that is inflation and then we have this inflation this is a situation where the inflation decreases over time the rate of inflation decreases three twelve inflation prices are going up here this inflation these prices went up this inflation it means this rate is now decreasing does it mean price are decreasing rate twelve i want you to understand this inflation increase our target is three to six percent right now we have a situation where um, there's too much money chasing few goods so a minority in the country have money they are buying so much inflation moves from the target to seven percent or nine let's say ten percent there's ten percent inflation that was noticed right so this is the graph inflation prices are increasing to ten percent which is beyond the target now um the reserve bank or the monetary policy committee they see this as a problem remember we said the purchasing power decreases now the marginalized group cannot afford now what happens the monetary policy come up with measures they increase interest rate to reduce borrowing then there's less money in the economy in circulation people are not borrowing they're not buying so much anymore those who have loans they pay their loans with high interest it decreases their money in the pocket so if it decreases their money in the pocket it means that uh, the purchase uh, they won't be buying much as well the consumption will decrease when the consumption decrease inflation now moves back it crawls back to the target to 5.4 percent right so there's nothing wrong with that uh, I, I like using bread i like bread so the price of bread was 20 rand now the price of bread all of a sudden is 28 rand that is high inflation right so the price of bread increased drastically now if we are combined in this situation it happens that now the situation was combined now the price of bread is 21 rand or 22 rand doesn't mean that the prices has decreased below 20 rand so there's not general decrease in prices it is called disinflation so this is good this inflation is good because we are decreasing the inflation that is there we said inflation is not good so we are going to decrease the inflation using methods uh, policies like monetary policy to decrease this situation let's look at uh, uh, um, issues like um, the price of x um, late last year the price of x was too high increased so much uh, they were reason chicken flu whatsoever those were exogenous factors in the supply side so the supply side was 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 pushed to increase prices they were struggling as well so they were pushed to increase prices right they pushed to increase prices then that situation gets sorted the moment it gets sorted then the prices go back to normal right so it's a disinflation when there's a decrease in inflation over time which is nothing wrong with that one but then we have this one deflation when you look at deflation you see this was going up this orange thing you uh, was going up now the orange thing now you see if our graph our graph should be like this is the graph the normal graph everything must happen here but if you see this one it's happening down here now it's happening down here right so this is a deflation deflation is as bad as inflation it's also bad deflation is bad inflation is bad disinflation is not bad right so as much as inflation also is bad but it's not bad for everyone who we'll speak about that 
right deflation is a decrease in the general price level of goods and services a decrease in the general prices this inflation is a decrease of inflation rate this deflation is a decrease in the general price so meaning the prices are decreasing of goods and services so you wake up bread is 9 19 run from 20 run the following day is 18 run the other day is 17 run the other day is 15 run that is a deflation so there's a general decrease in prices of goods it's bad for the economy as well because producers when prices are decreasing they are discouraged to produce because they are not going to get profit also it can delay consumption if you know very well that the sneaker that you want uh, is 1000 today chances are next week to be 900 you are not going to buy it today you're going to delay consumption so there's no money in circulation money is not multiplying people are not buying they are hoping for the lowest price and the next week you get it 900 and you just said this like ah there's deflation in south africa this price is going to be down soon so you are delaying your consumption further so the most people now are delaying consumption and remember for our economy to go around we need to spend the money must be spent so that it can circulate when we spend we create an injection one person spending becomes someone else income so if we are delaying spending there's no income and then there won't be production so deflation also it becomes a problem it discourage producers it delays consumption also investors lose a confidence in that economy so a uh, so deflation is the opposite of inflation right um let's look at inflate deflation um it is ca characterized by a negative inflation rate meaning that prices actually uh, are actually falling over time so we said it's a general decrease in the prices what can be the cause of deflation can be caused by um, certain factors such as decreased demand due to economic recession sometimes prices may decrease because people are not buying then producers they don't have a choice there's a decreased demand then the market the market is not responding well with the market price that is given then they decrease their price uh, their prices technological advancement sometimes you have a proper technology that produce at the lower prices so if the production cost is low then uh, the prices may also decrease or decrease in the money supply so those are the causes of can be example of the causes of deflation effect effects of deflation um it can have significant economic implication uh while falling prices may be seen as beneficial for consumers obviously when i say price are decreasing is a problem then consumers are like no that is not a problem when price are decreasing is good for us right so initially it seems as beneficial for consumers but prolonged deflation can lead to reduced consumer spending like we said people may not spend anymore because they think in price will decrease further increase real debt burdens lower cons uh, business profits and potential high unemployment as businesses cut costs so if businesses are not making profit then they have to cut costs by not employing new people or letting go of those people who are there already working because they also try to cut their cost this inflation does not imply that prices are falling we've explained that one prices are not falling inflation is decreasing but rather the rate of the price increase is decelerating so that rate of inflation now is decelerating that is disinflation this inflation can occur due to factors such as tight monetary policy by reserve bank so the reserve bank using monetary policy they can create this inflation um, by raising interest rate to reduce inflation when prices are increasing the past two years reserve bank our monetary policy the governor has represented every quarter it started this year i think the second quarter where he said the the, the 
the repo rate will remain constant and we were happy about it but the past two years it has been increasing the every time he comes he will increase the repo rate by 50 basis point 25 basis point why because of the inflation rate that was there our inflation was above the target so the reserve bank was trying to do what to put it in within the target so they wanted to create this inflation they wanted to reduce the inflation rate that is there because the inflation rate was too high it was above the target our target is three to six percent however the reserve bank will want our inflation to be around 4.5 which is the middle number between three and six so if our inflation is around seven then it creates panic for consumers and then that does what it, it, it affects our economy then the, the reserve bank will have to tighten their monetary policy by raising interest rate to reduce inflation pressure right also uh, this inflation can be caused by improved productivity lower productivity means that you're going to increase prices as a producer the people who are working for you are not productive they're not producing efficiently they are wasting their resources but their wages remain the same you're still paying them more they're even bargaining for more salaries then you do it you need to increase the price of the goods and services that you are selling so that you can cover the cost however if now you train your staff they become more productive it means they are going to produce efficiently and they will cut cost for you then you can decrease your prices because now there is more productivity and improved productivity can be using proper machines now instead of using that old machine that takes time to produce now your production is low you have to increase price you do what you buy a newer machine that can produce even faster and at a cheaper cost then uh, you can decrease the prices also a decreased demand due to economic slowdown can cause disinflation when you stop buying the markets will respond by decreasing prices because they see people don't have money then we can have this inflation right grade 12 i hope you do understand the difference between the deflation and disinflation is not the same thing this the one with dis it means that inflation rate is decreasing the one with de it means that there's a general decrease in prices is an opposite of inflation is not good also inflation is not good right um the effect of this inflation uh, has less severe economic impact this one is there's nothing wrong with it for real however if it lasts long then it's a problem this inflation does have to decrease that price of bread from it was 20 rand now it's 28 rand due to inflation reduce it back to 20 rand you don't have to reduce it to 12 rand then you're creating a deflation but then uh, in a short run this inflation is good there's no major impact on the economy is actually good for the economy uh, it can contribute to price stability and make it easy for consumers and businesses to plan for the future however a prolonged disinflation can sometimes lead to concern about deflation so if this disinflation takes longer then it may lead to deflation and um, if it, it continues to decelerate towards a negative inflation rate if it this disinflation if it continues to decelerate let's look at this inflation is decreasing deflation price now it is a general decrease on prices so if there's disinflation yeah continue to decrease below inflation rate then it becomes what a deflation right let's look at how to measure inflation inflation is measured in indexes weighting and inflation rate so the first one is indexes inflation can be measured using indexes we have two indexes this is not new information to you because we've discussed this on our economic indicator we discussed the difference between the cpi and the ppi so cpi and ppi can be used to measure inflation a price index is compiled by using the prices of representative range of goods and services which are recorded on a regular basis 
can be quarterly, yearly. The states essay give us this information. So we measure it by consumer price indexes. This affect as household and producer price indexes is the businesses. So consumer price index, it pertains the cost of living, how much uh, it costs us to buy our goods and services, the cost of living. We look at the same basket of goods and services that we buy. So inside the basket, how much must we use to buy the same basket over a period of time from a month to month? the same basket are you still paying that hundred rand note or now to get the same basket you must top up with 50 rand that is what consumer price index it shows us the cost of living for your survival whatever that you buy or okay you're in grade 12 you're not buying anything you're not working your parents whatever that they are buying for you everything the school uniform food nice shoes, nice sneakers, whatever that you are having, that is what it, it, it includes um, your cost of living. When you calculate that, it's the cost of your living. It's cost of living. So it's calculated using what? The consumer price index, your cost of living. For your survival, breathing in and out, that is your cost of living. Right, a basket consists of consumer goods and services. So this basket, it consists of consumer goods and services. We're going to discuss in details what are we putting in the basket. In the basket, it depends on the income category. We cannot put the same thing in the, in the basket. There are high earners, low earners. High earners will have more things in their basket, uh, uh, whatever category. They will be putting luxurious things in the category, in their basket. Low earners, they will be having the basic needs, so it will depend. Then you have uh, under CPI, this capital and intermediate goods are excluded. Remember, this is final goods, so we exclude capital and intermediate goods. Prices include VAT, it's a final good, so VAT is included. Interest rate is taken into account. And then we have the producer price index. It pertains of the cost of production of the producers, and the cost of labor, raw material. It's calculated in the price of producer price index. It consists of goods only, no services. Capital and intermediate goods are included. These prices exclude VAT. Interest rate are excluded. Right. Um, the next measure you have a uh, weighting. So you have indexes, weighting, and the inflation rate. So we've discussed what we've discussed. Um, your indexes CPI um, measure the cost of living it measures the consumers basket of goods and services the PPI it measures the cost of production it measures goods only it measures goods when they leave the factory gate and those goods that are entering the country when they are uh, the imported goods when they are entering the country CPI include VAT it excludes capital and intermediate goods. PPI excludes VAT. It includes a uh, capital and intermediate goods because they're still producing. CPI includes interest rate. The PPI is not including interest rate. CPI does not show import price of import goods, and the PPI shows the price of import goods. Again, PPI will lead to a uh, to give us a direction on the CPI. If the production price index increases, meaning it takes them much money to produce, the consumer price index will increase. When it costs you much to produce, then you'll charge high prices. The next um, type of, um, or the next way of measuring inflation is waiting. Waiting. So put it in a weight, you wait. It's a waiting. You, 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 you. You measure it through weighting. So it's indexes, then now it's weighting. Weighting, the different um, importance of items in indexes. So in that index, uh, is solved through weighting. We said the indexes is this basket of goods and services. Now we need to weigh them. So we weigh them, 
right so through weighting index which reflects the relative importance of each item so every item that is in the basket we need to know the importance of it and then we calculate the inflation for that item each item or a category in the basket is assigned a weight which reflects its relative importance in the total expenditure of an average consumer so the item in the basket you look at the weighting of it because how important it is to an average consumer and then we look um at, 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 at the prices increase of it the inflation for that uh, item for example housing expenses might be a higher weight than movie ticket because housing typically represent a larger proportion of household budget so we look at when you look at inflation we we we, we look at relative importance uh, for example uh, housing expenses um let's say your food stuff um that you need in the house and we compare to your entertainment so when we calculate inflation obviously in the basket we we'll put things that are more important to majority of the household and then the movie ticket we put it aside because uh, it may not carry the same importance it's not reflecting the importance for all household so that's why that's how we measure inflation by weighing these goods and services in the basket we need to weigh them right the weights ensure that items that have a larger impact on consumer budget contributes more to the overall inflation rate so when you talk about our overall inflation rate uh, we look at those schools that are having large impact on consumers changes in the weights over time reflect a shift in consumer spending patterns and help to keep inflation index relevant to current economic conditions right then the last way that we can use to measure inflation is inflation rate itself so inflation rate that is a percentage the inflation rate is a, is determined by using cpi so this one is also known as our inflation because uh, we use cpi to calculate our inflation or ppi indexes however the most important one is this one the cpi is used to calculate our inflation the figures for each month are compared to the corresponding month in the previous year so for example august 2023 compared with august 2024 so the figures of our cpi will compare 2023 and 2024 if it has increased the price has increased then it means that there's inflation right so how do we do this we must choose a base period so to see if there's inflation or not there must be a base period a base period is a base year so if a base year is 2050 we are going to talk about inflation comparing to the base year because the base year we used to buy this product at this price now 2024 how much is it that's how you check remember the real uh, gdp will be talking about the production the real production nominal we're talking about the current price so the different is the real one is using the base year the nominal is using the current year so for us to be able to calculate we must find a base year which ba which year are we basing our information on you can't just say there's inflation why why are you saying this price as a person born today if they could understand they will ask why do you say it's inflation i know this price or a person moving to south africa and say uh, the price of uh, 30x is this much and then you say there's inflation they won't understand you are basing it on what what makes you say there's inflation then you say that in 2010 the price of this thing was this much that's why i'm saying that there's a general increase in prices so we must find a base year a typical uh, a specific period in the past is chosen uh, typically a specific period in the past is chosen as the base period against which current prices are compared so you take a year uh, south africa usually give us the base year uh, the base year was 2015 uh, it was 2010 it was 2015 it was supposed to be 2020 however due to the issues that happened in 2020 uh, 2020 was not selected as the base year uh, for now we are not sure uh, 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 but then we can still use 2015 just to be safe right 
and then we select the price index after getting the base here we select the price index that we are using right there is cpi ppi GD, gdp deflector so let's select this one we'll use cpi so you have the base here the base year uh, can be whatever year let's use our base year is 2023 our base year is 2023 we are going to use cpi what do we want we want inflation rate so we need to choose a base year and a and a, a price index we are not going to use ppi we are going to use the cpi right after choosing this you compute the index for base period calculate the index value for chosen base period using the selected price base so I'll, I'll show you now the calculation here you you compute the indexes for current year then you calculate the value for the current period using the same prices grade 12 uh, this is just what is explained here by using what the current year base year but then let's get to number three and look at the inflation rate calculation so we have chosen a base year right so our current year is 2024 base year 2023 right over base year 2023 and then we are going to use what the cpi 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 so the cpi must be given for us how much is the cpi then you take the cpi for the current year minus the cpi from the base year which is the previous year in this um in this scenario over the base year which is your previous year times 100 then you get what the inflation rate let's look at an example suppose the cpi base year is january 2023 and it's 150 uh, and then the current period is january 2024 and our cpi is 155 right so we must do we must calculate what the inflation what is the inflation rate so you take the cpi for the current remember you take current minus previous over previous times 100 so your current is 155 so you say 155 minus the previous 150 over 150 to make it a rate remember a rate is a percentage you times it by 100 5 over 150 5 is 155 minus 150 you get your 5 over the base year 150 times 100 and your inflation rate is 3.3 so you say that inflation is 3.3 is within what the 3 to 6 percent so inflation is within three to six percent is three point three three percent that's how you calculate inflation rate by using the cpi so your, your calculation is cpi current minus cpi previous over cpi previous times 100 that's how you calculate the inflation so that's how you measure inflation inflation is measured in three ways indexes weighting and the inflation rate right let's move to types of inflation so we have types of inflation the first one is headline inflation this is measured by the consumer price index it's also known as the consumer price index it's called the unadjusted cpi it represents the cost of the shopping basket of goods and services typical of a typical south african household so it represents the shopping baskets of goods and services remember we said the headline is also known as your cpi the unadjusted cpi inflation rate is also known as headline so it is an unadjusted cpi interest rate are the main monetary instrument used by the reserve bank to tighten inflation so what are you taking from here grade 12 is that is the headline inflation it shows it represents the cost of shopping basket of goods and services by south african household usually in the urban areas right and then the other type is cpix um, it calculates inflation rate excluding the effect of mortgage bond interest rate so this x is to exclude interest rate why grade 12 inflation and interest rate are two different things inflation 
the general increase in the price of goods and services, the general and sustained increase in the price of goods and services. Interest rate is what is charged when you borrow lending money. Repo rate when the reserve bank borrow the commercial bank. Prime rate, the, 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 the interest rate charged by the commercial banks to their most favorable uh, consumers, borrowers. All right? Uh, that is uh, your prime rate. So sometimes when the interest rate is increasing, people, not you, not you, grade 12, other people who are not doing economics, they think that inflation is increasing. No, interest rate is increased because there's inflation. So there's two different things. Interest rate, when a person is now, your parent at home, uh, their, their car installment was 5,000, now is 6,000, and they say, hey, there's inflation. You tell them, no, ma'am, that is not inflation. There's interest rate. Yes, the interest rate increased because there was inflation. However, there's a difference between inflation and interest rate. So the CPI acts is to uh, 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 remove, remove what? Is to remove um, the confusion by people. So this one, is it calculates inflation excluding the interest rate. That is a CPI X. Then we have core inflation. This one excludes items. The core inflation is still CPI. However, it excludes some items. It doesn't take all the items from the CPI. It excludes some items that have highly volatile prices and, and, and items with prices that are affected by the government. Two items are excluded by core inflation. So they take CPI basket. However, they remove this. Products that are highly volatile in prices. Fruits, veggies, meat. Well, what are these products? Are the products where the prices changes all the time? So you cannot uh, measure the inflation. Price of fruits will depend on the season. Season for avocados, avocado will be cheap. When is not the season for avocado, avocado become expensive. So the prices changes over the year, throughout the year, it just changes. Fuel prices changes, meat prices changes, frozen frozen meat prices also change. So the prices of these goods are are changing over time, so we remove them. So core inflation will always be less than CPI. CPI include all these things in the basket. Core inflation come and exclude things that are highly volatile, and they also exclude prices that are affected by the government, policies and intervention, prices like rates, water, uh, those prices are, are administered prices that are charged by the government. So we exclude them from the CPI. We exclude product with a uh, price changes over time that changes all the time. And we exclude prices that are charged by the government. That is a core inflation. So core inflation will always be less than the CPI. I hope that makes sense. CPI include everything. Core inflation excludes some things. Right. And then we have administered prices, inflation. These are price of goods and services that are set by the government on all controlled by government appointed authorities. So your taxes, your water, electricity, those are administered prices, are prices set by the government. And then you have producer inflation measured by the product production price index and measures the cost of production, that is PPI. And then you have all inclusive, all inclusive inflation. It measures um, inflation that considers the prices changes across all sectors and all categories of goods and services. So it includes your CPI, everything that is in the report. So it is it's all inclusive. So it measures all the price changes across all the sectors and all the categories. That is all inclusive. Right, before we move from this one, grade 12, let me just go back to administered prices. These are the price set by the government. Right? Are the price set by the government? They can ask nice question there and ask you how how is administered prices reducing uh, inflation? Then you can answer there or evaluate it. Uh, if it increases or decrease inflation. Sometimes government agree into increasing those municipality rates, which also affect businesses. Taxes, when it increases, it affects businesses to increase prices. As also government can reduce the prices of those things that they are setting prices on, then it will affect us 
positively so so we can also look at things like that sometimes the question doesn't come as directly as you want it to be that is economics question never really come as you want them to be they can ask it anyhow right and then you have you have a hyperinflation and uh, this is the most extreme of inflation inflation is a general increase in price this one is called a runaway inflation inflation out of control it means that inflation rate increase with 50 percent or more per month so this economy is not stable prices increase with 50 percent or more that is too much so it's called a runaway inflation the national currency is almost worth nothing and people lose their confidence in the monetary unit there was a situation like this in in zimbabwe many years ago uh, right now, Zimbabwe is, is baking their money with gold. Remember when we did um, our exchange rate systems, uh, we said that uh, back then also when we are still using a fixed system whatsoever, um, the money will be backed with gold. Now their money is backed with gold, so it's, it's, it's gaining much value, we can say. However, many years ago, they had this runaway inflation where people will go to work and then when they come back, the price of goods already are increasing uh, so much so you even ask for your pay very early before you, you knock off to quickly go by before the price are, are increasing this affect the national currency so the national currency become almost worth nothing that's all they would make jokes and saying that people in Zimbabwe they will carry a suitcase to buy bread why because their value of money now lost value why because of prices increasing so much but then we can say things are looking better for them. People lose confidence and faith in this economy. So if there's a hyperinflation, people lose confidence in that economy. And it can occur in times of war. Sometimes it can occur in times of war. What you're taking away from this hyperinflation grade 12 is that this inflation increased with 50% or more. So it is a, 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 a runaway inflation. And we have stagflation. So this stagflation, um, this low economic growth, uh, due to strong monetary and fiscal policies to cap high inflation. So yeah, two things are happening that you never thought would happen. We always speak of inverse relationship. When there's unemployment, the unemployment is low, inflation will increase. However, in this case, both unemployment is high, inflation is high. So it's a, it's a condition where a low economic growth exists due to what? They are trying to use monetary and fiscal policy to curb inflation. And this high inflation is not decreasing. However, the economic growth decreases. So inflation is still high and economic growth decreases. When the economic growth decreases, unemployment increases. So you'll have two situations that are bad at the same time unemployment high inflation is high it is a condition of stagnation of economic growth low growth and unemployment and high rate of inflation at the same time so you have low growth high unemployment high inflation at the same time that is stagflation is too bad occurs in economics that lost the ability to create new jobs so even if they are trying to cap inflation by using monetary and fiscal policy they cannot create new jobs meaning they are not having labor intensive industries so we can have a situation like stagflation when policies are not also used correct right um grade 12 those were the types of inflation that we have we are going to do uh, this activity um Let's look at number one. We study the, 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 the data, then we answer which one of the following types of inflation is the official inflation rate. Let's look there. There is core and headline. Headline is also what your CPI, right? Oh, it's here. CPI headline. So your answer is there. What is the inflation target rate? by the south africa reserve bank uh, we've spoken about that it's your three to six percent right so those questions i said is the easy questions everyone must be able to get that one because you always find them on your data so i'm going to give you 
um, five minutes to answer the following question. So you're only going to answer three, four, five, since we did one, two together. Then we'll do correction after that. Right, let's look at possible answers. We already answered number one as headline inflation, number two as three and six percent between three to six percent. Right, let's look at number three. What effect will an increase in interest rate have on the trend of the CPI curve? If the interest rate is increasing, what will happen to the consumer price indexes? Interest rate is increasing. When interest rate is increasing, it means that there's less borrowing. When there's less borrowing, the consumer price indexes will decrease. Inflation, they're asking you about this one, the CPI grid 12. It also rep represents inflation. So the question is, if there's an increase in interest rate, what will happen to inflation? Remember, we use interest rate, we increase interest rate to do what? To cap inflation. So if there's an increase in interest rate, the inflation will decrease. Let's look at how to answer this one. There will be a fall or a drop in the trend line, which trend of CPI, due to a decrease in demand for goods and services. So less demand for credit, right? So if there's less demand for credit, there will be a drop in what? In the trend of our, our CPI. What negative influence will inflation have on the balance of payment? When prices are increasing, what happens to the balance of payment? Will it balance, deficit, a surplus? Prices are increasing, not only for us. Even those who used to buy from us, export from us, they find it difficult to buy from us because prices are high. Then they do what? They stop buying from us, meaning export decrease. Export decrease, our BOP will do what? will have a disequilibrium. It will have a deficit. South Africa export will become more expensive. So to buy from us is expensive. Therefore, the country will sell less. Imports will be higher than exports. Since the exports are expensive, they no longer export from us. So the imports will be higher than export. export. And then this will have a problem on our balance of payment. It will create a deficit. Now, the last question, why is core inflation lower than the CPI? Core inflation, we said it excludes prices that are highly volatile and administered prices. CPI include everything. So CPI will be high because it includes everything in the basket that is calculated. This one excludes some things. So that's why it will be lower. Products with highly volatile prices are excluded. For example, fresh vegetables, fish, uh, fresh meat are excluded. All right. And then the CPI headline inflation is calculated by using a selection basket of goods and services that average household use. CPI inf uh, headline inflation, it calculates everything on the basket that we are using and then the core inflation excludes other things. Right, uh, that was your activity. Now for your homework, um, debate the merits which is benefits of administered prices this is what I was speaking about there with administered prices that you can have a nice uh, apologies for this grade 12 this is an 8 mark question so when you're doing your homework just take note this is an 8 mark question so you're going to talk about the benefits of administered prices the price that are set by the government what is the benefit in the economy by this administered prices Right, let's look at um, the summary. Uh, this is the end of our lesson. So we look at what we've done today. Inflation refers to what and sustained increase in the general price of goods and services over time and is typically measured annually. And there's a percentage that we use. Um, we, we measure it through indexes. We measure it through weighting. We measure it through inflation rate where we're using our calculation CPI current minus CPI previous over CPI previous times 100. And we also look at 
uh, types of inflation you have headline co-inflation administered crisis stagflation hyperinflation um, those are the types of inflation that we have discussed so on the next lesson 312 we are going to look at the monetary and the canadian explanation of inflation and we also the bigger thing is this one we're going to look at the causes of inflation what causes inflation we're going to discuss the demand pool inflation and the cost push inflation so please join me on the next lesson thank you very much for joining in today see you next time grade 12 keep well